What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Sports Reality, the 197th edition. My name is Jeremy John, here to bring to you all things sports. Let's uh, welcome a man, Max, Maximilian, in the building. How's everything? Uh, before we start, uh, F you in Boston. That's all I got to say for be- beating my, my Wizards last week. Did that happen? Uh, so let's get that out the way. And now we can be friends. All right, we good, man. We good. <laughs> this, yeah, we we got a lot to say about those games. Um, but yeah, that was it was an excellent series. It was very well matched teams. Even when you said though, you're like, all right, they're going to the finals and like all that, and I was like, all right, you know, that's optimistic. Neither of them like. We got the Celtics game. That 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 was a turn off yesterday. But um, before that, nah, man, I think it's it's gonna be Cavs or uh, Golden State. I love my Celtics, but I'm a, I'm a realistic person. <laughs> oh, it's going good. How are you guys doing? Looking better. Looking better. We also have uh talk about the balls. The Lon- Lonzo ball, LeVar ball, we're gonna get into all of that. Also some uh NBA basically uh, baseball news, NHL actually uh I'm gonna talk real quick about the the Uh, on this day, um, in 1968, Willie Stargell of the Pittsburgh Pirates hit three home runs, a single, and a double. What a impressive game. Uh, 1975, Joe Namath refused a $4 million offer to play for Chicago in the World Football League. In um, 1985, Pete Rose passed Hank Aaron as the National League run scoring leader with 2,108. 1991, the NFL owners agreed to add two new teams in 1994. Those two new teams were uh, Carolina and Jacksonville, yes. Uh, 2002, Mark Pryor became only the 14th Chicago Cubs player since 1920 to win his major league debut. The Cubs beat the Pirates 7-4. Uh, also on this day in 2002, Barry Bonds hit his 583rd home run. He tied Mark McGuire for fifth on the all-time list. 2003, uh, high school basketball star LeBron James on this day signed a $90 million Nike endorsement deal. He is probably the last athlete to sign a mega shoe deal off the break. And we'll actually talk about shoe deals uh, later in this show. And, um, yes, yeah, so that is today in sports history. Man, let's get right into the NBA. Uh, I do want to start off a week ago. Matt, our Wizards, lost to Max's Celtics in game seven. Um, tragedy. It was a tragedy, man. Kelly Olenek, man. I mean, he, he, he saved the Celtics. What man. about that? <laughs> he was doing it. Max, what were you thinking when you see Kelly Olynyk dropping buckets? I was like, I was thinking, where did he come from? And I was like, this is the, this is some Celtic shit. <laughs> <laughs> it is game seven in Boston. Some magic happens, you, and, and and this is exactly what happened. Isaiah Thomas played a solid game. You had guys like Avery Bradley played okay, but Kelly Olynyk, twenty four points off the bench, fourteen in the fourth quarter. Yeah, it was really dope. It was really dope to watch. And then he he just came alive, man. It was cool. When it comes with the Wizards, uh, Bradley Beal had 38 points. John Wall, when it comes to John Wall's standards of the last year and a half, did not really play well. He played okay. 
But when it comes to John Wall, that's not that's not a great game. And in a game seven, you would you would appreciate you would expect more from him. However, my biggest gripe with the Wizards was their rotation defense or lack of rotational defense, especially when it came to Marcin Gortat and and uh, Marcus Mor- uh, Markeith Morris. They did an awful job, Matt. When you watched the game, because we watched the game together, what, what was something that 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 stuck out to you about the 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 Wizards specifically? All the 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 rotations that the coach like had for the players, like not playing Kelly Oubre, and I'm I haven't been a, a Mark a Gortat fan for a long time. I think he's kind of a like he he's he's a, a center that. He needs a lot of help. He needs a big rebounder with him, and the Wizards don't have that. And he just – I feel like he underperforms a lot, and it really hurts the Lakers. But just his play, the lack of the lack of bench production, just it, it, it hurt the Lakers. I mean, it hurt the, the Wizards a lot, a lot in that game. Yeah. Um, you brought up something that I, I don't know how I forgot, but this was also – a big issue with the Wizards. Scott Brooks, man, it's like he reverted right back to his Oklahoma City Thunder days. He crumbled. He, <laughs> he crumbled. He, when the time was on, it, he made no adjustments. No adjustments. Bradley Beal kept the Wizards in the game with 38 points. He got hot in the second half. Um, but you can even say in the fourth quarter, eventually he probably got gassed. You mentioned Kelly Oubre getting six seconds Six seconds. He played the last that's six not, seconds. That is not a, that's not acceptable. Of the second ha- of the second quarter, Jason Smith, who it, who has been the first big man off the bench up until Jan Mahimi somehow the came back. Jan Mahimi is garbage. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He he is not good. You cannot be you seven feet move. tall coming off the bench with a stat line of zero points. Zero rebounds. That's the big one. Zero rebounds and four fouls off the bench. Like, what is your purpose at that at, at this point, being on the floor? But I understand they signed him for a four-year, what was a $64 million contract. So I honestly believe Ernie Grunfeld, the general manager, was probably in the air, in the ear of Scott Brooks and saying, you got to play this dude. He's quote unquote healthy right now. You got to play this dude. Jason Smith is the best big man, really, probably the Wizards have. Unfortunately, he can't play 28, 30 minutes a game, so he comes off the bench. Um, Gortat can play a little uh, a little more, but we're going to see how things go, man. Jason Smith might – Jason Smith might be might be a starter if he's on this team next year. <laughs> um, also, another big thing that the Wizards have to have to somehow work out is the is the bench. The bench is abysmal. It's not good. It is abysmal. I, we thought Brandon Jennings coming would have created a spark. I don't know if it's trying to get used to an offense that he's not familiar with. I don't know if this is just Brandon Jennings. Right now no, in his career, he was traditionally bad, so this may just be him. <laughs> uh, Boban B- B- uh, Bogdanovich played pretty well when he first got here in the playoffs. He he had stretches. I think part of the reason for him could have been the amount of minutes in the game couldn't really get into a rhythm. Um, and Jan Mahimi, garbage, straight garbage. Uh, shout out to BLK Sports Nine A Harold Laws. <laughs> Harold said. He wouldn't even want him on his rec basketball league right now. That's how bad he is. Like, and we laugh about it. Yami is an NBA playoff b- player, but I'm gonna ask you, Matt, if you had a rec league team and Yami Mihimi wanted to play, like, would you let this dude really play on your team? It'd be like he would have to buy the team jerseys. Like, there's no way he's just regularly getting on the team <laughs> off of him being good at basketball. So probably not. I'm gonna gonna go with no. <laughs> yeah, I, I okay. Look, we're we're we're, we're exaggerating here when we say he, he wouldn't no, be on course, on our on our rec league. However, awful. however, he's really bad. Like really bad. Uh, <laughs> I'm not trying to brag, but we probably know better big men that are more offensively skilled than he is. 
They're probably just not seven feet tall. They may be six eight, but they're more are offensively skilled down low, and and that's that's ridiculous, man. And, and then when when I went back and looked at the contract, it's a four year like sixty four million dollar contract. So he's gonna be here for a while, unfortunately. Unless they could do, unless they could trade yeah. him. What were you saying, Matt? It's a bad contract. Yeah, I I wish that there was some way that the Wizards could not have these awful contracts to big men because he last year it was or two years ago it was Nene who yep. had the terrible contract and he was an awful big man for us and then he gets a Houston and balls out and now it's Mahimi. Like I don't understand what it is with the Wizards and overpaying seven footers to do nothing. Yeah, it's 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 ridiculous. So let's talk about the Celtics. Of course, they win Game Seven, and then the very next night they win the draft lottery because, of course, they have the greatest general net- manager of all time. <laughs> Do they have the greatest general manager he of all time? Has made, he's made some very very savvy moves. Or or uh, he is or he's. He's either the best general manager or he is just smarter than a lot of the idiots in the NBA. I, I think awesome that is picture. exactly where I'm at. Uh, Danny Ainge, uh, former Celtic. Uh, you could, I guess you could still call him a great because he, he played on the bench, but he was a contributing player for the bench, off the bench. Definitely better than general manager. You know, he, uh, he, he wasn't Larry Bird or, or Parrish or McHale. However, he was a force on that team. Um, but he, he is a great when it comes to being a general manager right now. Um, he definitely fleeced the Nets. Oh, no, he, he, got, he got up on the Nets. He, he definitely fleeced the Nets. And, he can never uh, go into Brooklyn. Yeah, Brooklyn really thought they were going to win a championship like three years ago, and it all crumbled when they made that Here deal for Garnett and Pierce to play with uh, Lopez and Darren Williams, and right now the only player – on that team is a, on that team is still Brooke Lopez. <laughs> um, so of course they have the Nets pick, and the Nets had the worst record in the NBA, so they had the highest chance of getting the number one pick, and they did. So the Celtics got the number one pick that will they will be selecting in late June. But your I guess your favorite team, the Wizards, are your second favorite team when it comes I'm from to DC. I like to see the Wizards play well. Yeah, but your but your favorite team is the Los Angeles oh, Lakers. By far. And I'm like elated they got to keep their draft pick this year. Yeah, they weren't it was <laughs> the Lakers near the end of the season were winning games that they shouldn't have won. That was Couldn't messing up it. the chances to to get a uh to even get a lottery pick because the Lakers had a top three uh protected pick if um, they did not land in the top three. Their pick was going to go to Philadelphia, and they ended up getting the number two pick. How happy were you when you saw that? Uh, ten out of ten. Would definitely like. I I couldn't believe it. I didn't break out in the dance, but it was close. And just I'm just I'm excited to see who they're going to tra- who they're going to work out and the interview process and all that. Um. I am I'm not a conspiracy theorist. However, I believe in conspiracy theories, if that makes sense. Does that make sense, anyone? It makes perfect sense. That 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 I'm not believing everything's a conspiracy, but there are things that are. And I do think the NBA draft lottery is is a is is fixed. It's been look fixed. at the top three teams that won. <laughs> I mean, they finishing the top three old NBA teams that the NBA needs to see do well. <laughs> like. Let's go. Let's go back in history. Um, of course, the Knicks. I'm gonna go all the way back to '84. Knicks needed something for that. New York needed something. They got Patrick Ewing. Um, now this is the one time it did not work when the Celtics had the best chance to get Tim Duncan, and the Spurs ended up getting that. <laughs> the number one pick. That was the one time it didn't work. But let's go to the recent recent history. Uh, LeBron James leaves in 2010 to go to Miami. Um, so 2011, 2013, and 14, those draft picks. And hold on. Do I have the years correct? Basically, the four years LeBron James was not in Cleveland, three of those years, the Cavaliers they got, got the number, number one, one pick. <laughs> number one. Uh, in, be- in between that, the one year they didn't get it, the Pelicans got it. 
And the Pelicans were owned at that time by the NBA. And Mickey Loomis, who owns the New Orleans Saints, at that time had just bought the Pelicans. So to me, it felt like a here for buying this team. We'll give you the number one draft pick. <laughs> yeah, for buying this team that has nothing, that had just lost Chris Paul, that's in New Orleans in a, in a state that is all about football in a city where there's a lot of attractions the weather's nice but basketball is not a priority we'll give you the number one draft pick in anthony Anthony davis Davis. um last year number one draft pick philly gets it they select ben simmons philly is one of these large market teams that when they are relevant the nba is more exciting and now looking at uh, this upcoming draft, you have Boston, which could have possibly went to New York if uh, for, for Brooklyn. Let's say Brooklyn didn't trade that pick. It would have went to the Nets. So two large markets that need star power. You have the Lakers, and then you have who, – who got third? Third was uh, Philly. Philly. And then number four, uh, <laughs> number four, you know the the Suns end up getting number four, uh, and they were kind of salty because they were projected to still be a number uh, top three selection in the NBA draft. So let's let's talk about the Celtics, Max. I'm gonna ask you, as a Celtic fan, should the Celtics keep that pick or trade that pick? I say keep it, man. You never know. You never know. I tell him keep it. What do you think, uh, Matt? Uh, Matt how, what do you think? What do you think the Celtics should do with the number one draft pick? I think eventually that they need. I don't know if they need to do with this pick. They need to turn some of these assets that Danny Ainge has got the young assets into star power. Like there's no point to have a team full of good players and you lose to the the Cavs like like this. Should have lost to the Wizards. Should have lost to the, the the Bulls in the first round if Rondo doesn't get hurt. Like, that's, that's not okay for a team like this. So, I'm, like, still on defense about trading the number one pick. They may sh- look – they should look into it, see what they could get for it. Yes. But, I, yeah. I totally agree with you. See what you can get for it. Um, I know during the regular season you had Jimmy Butler flowing around about being traded to the Celtics. Paul George, well – Still that possibility, you got to throw that out there. But um, Paul George seems like pretty gun-ho that he wants to go specifically play for the Lakers. Um, but you have a player like Mar- Markel Fultz, who, by the way, played here in, in the area, local local basketball, local high school team, DeMatha High School out in Hyattsville, Maryland. Shout out to them. Um, he... I remember seeing him at DeMatha, and he was good. Like, he was good. Um, and then I saw a game when he played out in Washington, and I was just like, oh, this guy is actually pretty good. <laughs> and um, and now uh, we're going to see um, he might end up being the number one draft pick. Like, like I, and I think he's a. From what it looks like, he looks like he he's a great scorer. Somebody that obviously the the Celtics need. They need points. Like if you're gonna go up against a, a team like the Cavaliers, you need to be be able to score. In my opinion, so I personally think they probably should uh, go for Markel Fultz. Also, Jimmy Butler or Paul George. I understand they're stars right now. But you're in LeBron James's prime right now. And I honestly don't think any team is really going to do much outside. I mean, unless the Cavaliers have a significant injury. And maybe that's what teams like the Celtics or the Wizards in the East need to hope for, that someone on that team has a significant injury during a significant time where you can then, you know, sneak up and, and take the number one spot in the East. But I think they should... Uh, keep the number one pick and then go in free agency and say, look, got Isaiah Thomas. We got Markel Fultz. We got a good coach. You can come here and be the, be the big star and, and, and maybe 
maybe that's the way to go. Uh, talking about Isaiah Thomas, uh, got injured in uh, game two of the Eastern Conference Finals. Um, and he is now out for the remainder of the playoffs. And we do want to talk about game one and game two. I'm not going to talk about scores. I'm just going to tell you that, man, they were, they were pretty bad. They, <laughs> the Celtics got smacked by the Cavs. Cavs were resting at home. And uh, Max, if you could play those highlights for me. Um, Cavs were resting, came in. Time, Time to look at the, the top, top five, five plays, plays from, from game, game three, three of the, of the Western, Western Conference, Conference Finals. Finals. At the end of the first so, quarter, um, beautiful you had, um, touchdown pass Cavaliers waiting from for, David West for the, uh, to Ian for, Clark for the Celtics. The Celtics made uh, free throw I think they were probably gassed after sleeping. game seven and then um, also... At you know, number everything four. happened with the draft lottery. So game Jamel one, I was kind of like, eh, possibly. A picture possibly of perseverance. Aldridge game knocked two. it away, but McGee You lose by 44 points strong. at home. JaVale Fans McGee, booing. Max, 16 big points. Did you even finish game two? For the Warriors. Why at number game three. I, w- I was here. I was right. Okay. And it was like, it just. Good reason to not watch oh, it. Yeah, it was. That's an easy two. It, it was ugly. Wide it, it, open it to the rack so for two three uh, Matt, for the Warriors. Did you watch at it? At number two, uh, I was gonna turn Quickness in at ha- turn in at halftime, and then I saw Toughness. the score. KD and then I went about my night like the, it, in the I Warriors couldn't. victory. I couldn't. I was still too upset from game play seven. Came I think. from the Spurs, Davis Bertans. Um, yeah, I. I mean, Patty I saw Mills the miss. first quarter score, oh, then I saw my. the. That's what you call halftime score. And, I was just like, yeah, and slamming. Um, that's a look at the top five. But let's talk about last night. Saturday's Something good. NBA action. I guess for the Celtics and their fans. Cavaliers and uh, Celtics game three, five plays. Celtics were down by NBA. 16 NBA. points at halftime. Number five, and LeBron I James with pretty spent moves. attention. Kelly Olynyk. Up until nothing but watch fourth LeBron quarter. James and finds his way to the basket. That's our number five play of the night. And then I went back and watched the game later. And I was kind of like, the no, miss. the Celtics didn't let, I mean, the Cavs Kevin didn't Love let them come back. The Celtics court pass to balled LeBron out James, who lays it in. with players like what Marcus a play Smart, who, Kevin Love. do you remember full Marcus Smart in college, LeBron, Matt? Who does um, the easy he, part of that he one. He got into a fist fight with the fans. Number three. It was, see, now you're exaggerating. It Kyrie Irving, too. It was a, it was a shoving alone. match. <laughs> it, was like, it was a shoving match. <laughs> yes, but at number five. Marcus Smart Don't was balling. Don't you line balling. up something that you wanted to see fly? <laughs> Kyrie sees Kevin going What'd by say? and it's love seven, bringing it in it, from he, above. He balled out, yes. He, he balled out last night. And he's not really known for as a three-point shooter. Show me the power, child. I'm glad to say He can go out there. He can facilitate. He can, uh, you the know, gets a he can hit the mid-range. He can play good defense, play good defense but he at was looking like, I'm not exaggerating. The, the way he played last night, he played like a the rhythm while you can. Kyrie hey, he, he, I know we're asking a lot to play 82 games that way. This deal if you were to play like that for a season, for I mean, you are Cavaliers. an all-star in the East. On to number two, Cavs, um, turn it also, over. Yeah, yeah, guys like uh, Al Horford, he played uh, pretty well. LeBron James. LeBron Ooh, terrible game. with the patented <laughs> chase down block. He's and been Avery's so great throughout the that NBA playoffs. Good for number was this two. just a bad but game? But at number one, time winded down in the half. Kevin Love just missed, uh, but there's J.R. The Smith and the Seeds are going to need someone to wash LeBron away the good. pain. I the think I agree with you. It's the just game. a bad game. J.R. Smith, um, number one on the NBA.com. These things Come happen. It's just kind of funny how five just from literally days ago people were Western talking about. Conference final. Hey, is at uh, the end of the first quarter. Is Michael Jordan? The, I mean, is, uh, is, is LeBron James the greatest from basketball David player? West ever? Like to Ian Clark Blue off Philly. the made free throw. Ooh, LeBron James, and it caught yeah. San Antonio greatest basketball player ever. Sleeping. And it pains me so much to say that, but yeah, he probably. At is. Okay, four, we, we will talk about this on another Javel show, but. Uh, I think the combination a of a perseverance. personal All accomplishments and team accomplishments and what Michael Jordan has brought to the game of basketball makes him the greatest basketball player. Um, I think that's just my opinion. Um, that's fair. O- on court, I'm having a little bit of trouble arguing against LeBron James now. 
See, like I said, we, we got to talk about this on another day because we could end up spending the rest of the show just on this topic. Put a, put, a, put a bookmark on this. We'll come back. Yes, we'll definitely talk about this. Summer's coming up. Baseball will be dominating for a while. So uh, <laughs> we will definitely have time to talk about this. Um, but like you said, you, you said LeBron is probably the greatest basketball player ever. I disagree. I say Michael Jordan, and we'll get into that later. But after all of this talk for like almost a week, you know, this game happens. Also, Isaiah Thomas isn't playing. And somehow the Celtics win. And everyone's now looking at Celtics LeBron. It's a better team without Isaiah Thomas, I think. You think it's a better team? The Celtics are a better team without Isaiah Thomas. <sighs> they didn't lose by 40. They didn't lose by double digits. They kept the game. You know, Even at the worst in game three, they were only down 16 points, right? This is why I, this is where I disagree with you. <laughs> I think the sample size is way too small. Well, I understand the Celtics won the game. And Isaiah Thomas wasn't there. And as Isaiah was there for two games, and they lost. And lost in terrible fashion. Historic beatings. Yes, game, game four was a historical deficit. <laughs> losing margin. Not just for the Celtics, but playoff history. Um, at halftime, the score was 72 to 31, largest deficit at halftime of any NBA playoff game in the history of the league. Ouch. I understand that. I understand Isaiah Thomas was there. They're 0 and 2. He's not there. They're 1 and 0. But I think there's way too many factors that played into why the Celtics ended up winning. Um, guys like Marcus Smart played really well. Um, Avery Bradley played well. Uh, Jonas Drebko played well. Kelly Olenek played okay. Tito, Tito uh, I almost called him Tito Horford. I almost called him his father. Uh, Al Horford played well. Also, LeBron James played horrible. Terrible. <laughs> he scored 11 points. And the game was Terrible. still close. They, the, the Celtics still needed a last second jumper for that to happen. There are way too many factors that played into it. Kevin Love had six threes by halftime, did nothing the second half. Classic Kevin Love. Kyrie Irving, he, Kyrie does take some questionable shots. Questionable shots. So I think it was just way too many things that happened that played into it as to why the Celtics won. Now, I told you this last night, and I'm going to say it here on the air. If the Celtics stretch this to six or seven without Isaiah Thomas, then you may be on to something. They just got to win. One, that's one more win. Like, yeah. that's it. Yeah, yeah. They got to at least go back to Boston now. There's still game four. Then there's They game... could pull out one more win. And if they pull out one it, win. I think it's unlikely, but it could, it could happen. I personally think the Celtics are losing in five. But if they pull off one more win, it's obviously going to go six. Then I'm going to say, you know what? You you Knocked maybe away, onto something, McGee finished strong. but I still think the sample size is way too small. Sixteen you know, big points, one playoff for the series. Warriors. I mean, and we're talking about three. a playoffs. We're talking about a playoffs where Green. Isaiah Thomas dominated. Oh, um, that's the first an easy and two. Second round, and you, you can't tell me after being the injured, rack for two, you know, and three for the Warriors. In this round, you're just gonna say, "Oh, the team is somehow two. better." Um, Kevin Durant. The offensive Quickness. sets may run better, and but that doesn't mean that toughness. I think your team is better. KD with they can play on both ends of the court. Like, in the Warriors' victory. Easier. They don't you, have somebody the with a tremendous defensive liability. You, you make a great Bertans. point about defense because because of Isaiah Thomas' the size Mills miss. and oh also my. That's lack what of you call just good defensive Soren skills. Because let's be real, slamming. I understand he's five nine. That's a look at the top five players. There's some t- like Chris Paul. Like he still, still doesn't. Yeah, his skills no still aren't all good. <laughs> um, Our number so two play. So yeah, I that is so one thing I'll concede. But again, to you, if there's one the Cavalier you're going to guard, it's going to be LeBron James. But here's the alley oop inbound play. Darren Williams too. LeBron James, and that's our number two play. Number one, it could be no other. 
Um, Scored tied at 108. Just over 10 seconds to go. I know we can't play it out. Marcus Smart with the basketball. Watch the pick by Al Horford. It frees up Avery Bradley, who launches the three. The bounce. They wouldn't have needed this pick to be a lottery. With a tenth of a second to go, Avery Bradley leads the (laughs) Celtics back. So that's why I don't like the the number one play on NBA playoff game. I understand it was the only game on television for the NBA. I understand it's the playoffs, national television. But let's let's not overreact. I just think way too, way too many things played into why the Celtics ended up winning that game, and it is not simply well Isaiah Thomas wasn't there; they play better now. Let's move on to the Western Conference. Uh, we of course last week spoke about Kawhi Leonard and his injury, uh, which has definitely hampered the San Antonio Spurs. The Warriors are out here pretty much. I'm not going to even call them the Warriors. I'm going to call them the Western All-Stars because they have four All-Stars on that team. The Western All-Stars played up against the San Antonio Spurs. They're up now 3-0, game four is tonight. Simply, I'm going to ask you this. Is 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 this series over? It's done deal. It, it, it was over. Second, Zaza Pachulia slid under Kawhi Leonard. Now I'm going to ask you, well, okay, you brought up something. Was that a bas- typical basketball closeout? I would say if it was other anyone else, not anyone else, but Time if it was somebody else in the league, top five I would say yes. It is, that's a, that's a, of the a pretty semi-regular finals. closeout. At the but end of the first Zaza quarter, Pachulia has a history of being a dirty NBA player. David West and has got, he's Ian gotten Clark into altercations against the with the Spurs throw, players before. He, uh, what is it, he elbowed Patty Mills in the head. And I think that that closeout was definitely four, meant to Javel McGee not give Kawhi a place to land. A picture I, of perseverance. All I think knocked it away, it but McGee like, finished purpose. strong. That JaVale I know we don't have McGee, the highlight right now, but it is. I don't care. I mean, Warriors. you're still an NBA player. At number three, people try to say, "Well, he's a center. Green. They don't practice closeouts as centers." Oh, that's an easy two. He's in the NBA for a reason. Wide he's athletic enough to, to control his body two, three, more than anybody right now that's two, listening to this show right now. Kevin so Durant. don't give me the excuse that Witness. he's oh well he's seven feet tall and they don't practice closeout. Toughness. No, he's in the NBA. KD he's athletic enough to, to do points. Play. That the second victory. step, which but was his left foot, I think. Came from the like Spurs. who closes out, ends with their left, then steps with their the left again. Mills Usually, if you land with oh your left, then you go right. So that's you, what like, you call run through or walk through. And there was a step, and then he used the same the foot to step again. From that was the time Kawhi Leonard landed on his foot. wasn't natural, in my opinion. Um, it was on purpose. Did he intend to injure him? We never know, but he definitely, I agree with you, intended for Kawhi Leonard to not have space to land. And if he happened to get injured, well, he got injured. Um, but... I totally agree with you. Series went straight out the window as soon as Kawhi Leonard got injured. Um, if I'm the Spurs and it looks like he's not going to be ready for tonight, there's no point bringing him back. You're down 3-0. Kawhi Leonard's a young guy. You don't want to. You don't want to make the injury worse and let it be something that lingers for the rest of his career because it may be a simple sprain. However, sprains can turn into terrible ligament tears. And you don't want to be dealing with ankle injuries like Grant Hill. Remember, Grant Hill was going through the, those injuries, and that They're getting rushed back. And, and, and that took years off. Or I'm not gonna say he took years off his career. It actually paused his career for a long time. But it really affected his his dominance in the game. And, and Kawhi Leonard's one of those guys. Kawhi Leonard, I, I, Kawhi Leonard's like uh like Grant Hill can play both he sides. Can definitely, of the game. he's an MVP candidate, Defensive Player of the Year candidate. Oh like yeah, year in and year out. Like they should definitely sit. There's no, there's no. Like you said, there's no point. Yeah. So um, I, I personally believe that um, since uh, Kawhi Leonard went down, it, it was it was not good at all. Um, let's talk about the All NBA team. Let's talk about the uh, winners. Uh, the 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 All NBA team. Um, First team, Russell Westbrook, James Harden, Anthony Davis, LeBron James, Kawhi Leonard. Do you agree with that list? Who's the center? Anthony Davis. I agree with that list. 
there's the one. Go, oh, oh, oh what, what, what was the last part you said? The first team, like NBA first team, I feel like it's, that's a fine list. There's one person I do not think should be on this first team, and it should be Anthony Davis. And I Who think would you like an, an, Anthony Davis? I would replace him with Rudy Gobert. That's fair too. Rudy Gobert had a great year. Uh, Anthony Davis was just injured too often. Also, that team didn't sniff the playoffs. I understand they then added DeMarcus Cousins at the trade deadline, but didn't even sniff the playoffs, injured a little too often, um, and it wasn't even one of his better years. This could probably say statistically one of his least years. Um, I, I would I would put uh, Gobert on the first team and maybe Anthony Davis on the second team. Or actually, this year, I would put Anthony Davis on the third team because DeAndre Jordan had a better season than Anthony uh, Davis. Uh, I think Carl Anthony Towns should have been on one of these lists. Carl Anthony Towns is an honorable, honorable mention. He is the first in order in the line, in the official honorable mention. Like, he's first. So I, I just <laughs> don't – I feel like he was – like Anthony Davis, he had – a team that was definitely not going to the playoffs, but he had a crazy year. Yes. And this is his second year in the NBA. He or third year in the S- NBA. Second. He has been ball, or he has been balling the entire time. So second team: Steph Curry, Isaiah Thomas, Antetokounmpo, uh, Kevin Durant, Rudy Gobert. I'm cool with the list, except of course putting Gobert at, at the first team. Third team. Switch. John Wall of our Washington Wizards, DeMar DeRozan, Jimmy Butler, Draymond Green, DeAndre Jordan. And we mentioned honorable mention was Carl Anthony Towns, Chris Paul, Mark Gasol, DeMarcus Cousins, Paul George, Gordon Haywood. Talking about Paul George. Paul George, by missing out on being on any of the all-NBA teams, missed out on a chance at signing a super max contract with the Indiana Pacers, um, people are already asking, well, should we be changing the uh, CBA now because Paul George is going to be stiffed out of some money? And I say no because I think the uh, everyone in front of him <laughs> is rightfully in front of him, in my opinion. <laughs> he he wasn't a top 15 player this year, when it, just this year, in my opinion. And specifically, he wasn't a top three to six player when it comes to forwards. So he's a good player. He's one of the better players in the league, but this season did not deserve to be on the All-NBA team. All-NBA team is only 15 players. Three small forwards. If you get all the forwards, it's six. I mean, he wasn't in the top six, in my opinion. So sucks for him that he lost out on some money. Happened to, it happened to Anthony Davis last year. Remember Anthony it Davis? To Gordon Hayward this year. It happened to Gordon Hayward this year. And, and I think just rightfully, those guys just – there were just guys in front of them that were better. That's just all. Like, can it be something simple as that? They were, they were, they were just not as good as the other guys. Um, but, yeah, like I said, the NBA first team, I'm, I'm all in agreement, um, except when it comes to Anthony Davis. Now, the candidates for – Defensive player of the year, Kawhi Leonard. I think Draymond Green. Um, man, I'm having a blank at who else is on that. It's, a, it's only a two-person race. It is just a two-race like, for the defensive player of the year. And then uh, MVP. It's only a three-player race. Russell Westbrook, James Harden, Kawhi Leonard. Was LeBron James snubbed by not being a candidate? I don't think he was snubbed, but he was definitely given the the Michael Jordan treatment that you cannot win every year, and that if you can't win, then you you're not about to be nominated this year. And that just that's what happened this year. He's been too good for too long. He's not appreciated enough. And yeah, like maybe next year. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, I mean. The three guys who are nominated, I think this season had a better year than LeBron James. Uh, People need to stop confusing MVP to best player in the league. Because for, I'm going to throw out an example. Michael Jordan, literally from 1983, was the best player in the NBA. 
but he wasn't the MVP every year. Like from day one, Michael Jordan was the best player in the league. Um, LeBron James, for a large stretch of his career, was the best player in the NBA. But it doesn't mean you're going to win MVP every year. Kobe Bryant, same thing. Kobe Bryant has one MVP. But there was a stretch from about 2003. So what you could say, 2010, best player in the league. But he only has one MVP. Just because you're the best player doesn't mean you're going to get MVP. MVP, in my opinion. Every year, there's people that have crazy statistical years and carry their team like this year, like how James Harden carried his team and how Russell Westbrook had crazy statistical year. It happens every year. Like somebody is going to have a crazy year. Like even like you like you said, if you're the best player, it doesn't mean anything. Somebody could just have a better year than you. Yeah, definitely agree with you. Um, also, I do. Um, I think the NBA kind of low key snubbed LeBron because they're just like, look, you kind of took like ten games off this year, like without injury. And I understand it's ten; it's only one eighth of a season, but I mean, <laughs> you you just can't be out here saying I'm not playing because I'm not uh, just resting. And then you want the fans and the media to be like, hey, but vote me for MVP, though. Like, in my opinion, you just can't do that. You just 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 take your L. You didn't you didn't get nominated. And then, of course, he spoke about how, oh, yeah, everyone knows, you know, the real deal. I'm, I'm the best player in the league, blah, blah, blah. And then you stunk it up with an 11-point game last night. Michael Jordan never had an 11-point game in the playoffs, though. Uh, he Number did, one. but not as many of these. <laughs> he, I remember. Uh, I, not that I remember. I went back and I looked. LeBron. I mean, Cope, uh, Michael Jordan had a game against the Pistons where he really stunk it up and did nothing. But that is only the. There's only one playoff game that I can go back and find where he really didn't do anything. LeBron James has done this a few times against Big the Celtics, times. Game Five in 2010. Uh, against the Dallas Mavericks in the 2011 uh, finals, numerous times in that finals. Um, you can even say, I wouldn't say the, the first, you could say probably the first couple games of last year's finals did not play well against the Warriors. And then just times against the Celtics, uh, about, I think 2000, was it 2008? Yeah, 2008. He had a couple games he didn't play well. I mean, it's happened a few times that I can just say it off the top of my head. It's regular. It happens. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, LeBron James not being nominated, in my opinion, uh, perfectly fine. And it really was. It really is just a three-horse three, three, uh, three horse race, in my opinion. Um, LeVar Ball. And I forgot to get the clip for you all, but LeVar Ball was on – Fox Sports on Colin Cowherd's show. And Colin Cowherd has an interesting, I guess, radio show, television show. Um, he is the host. He asks the questions during the interview. He does his monologues and things like that. However, he does, I guess, I wouldn't say a co-host. There is like, because they're not on the same level, I guess, when it comes to the production of the show. But there is a a a a, a woman, Christine Leahy, I can't even say a moderator because at least with first take, Molly Karam is the moderator. So she asks the questions. She keeps the uh, discussions flowing and then occasionally, you know, chimes in with with an opinion. I really don't know what Christine Leahy's uh, duty is on that show. Now, she's on other shows on Fox Sports uh, where she is, of course, a co-host on the show and has a more prominent role. But uh, Christine Leahy. In you could, I think back in March she was talking about LeVar Ball and insinuated actually not insinuated she did use the word abuse in like that's a quotable word she used abuse when it came to LeVar Ball and his and his boys uh, Lonzo Lamelo and um, can't met, can't remember the. Uh, can't remember the uh, the middle one, the one that everyone's Leangelo. not talking about. Leangelo, yes. <laughs> oh, man, that's middle child syndrome at its finest right there. Um, but, you know, she she did use the word abuse. She was like, yeah, are they, is he abusing them? You know, they don't speak for themselves, blah, blah, blah. 
Well, fast forward to this Wednesday, LeVar Ball is on um LeVar Ball is on Fox and she Colin Cowherd is asking LeVar Ball questions and then she just jumps in and asks him a question. LeVar Ball, yes, he did say stay in your lane. That is a quote. He said stay in your lane. And then pretty much said, I don't feel like talking to you. I'm here talking to Colin Cowherd, the ho- the host. And she then tried to spin it and was pretty much like, oh, well, I mean, um, you're so disrespectful, blah, blah, blah. Which, yes, LeVar Ball was being disrespectful. Was he misogynist? Probably. He probably meant, he probably did mean, yo, you, as a woman in the sports world, you need to stay in your lane as being the, I guess, intro or the voice of the, of the show until Colin Cowherd comes on. He probably was being misogynistic. But this is where I kind of lost respect for her when LeVar Ball continued to say why he did not want to deal with her and say, hey, you're a hater. You've always hated everything I've done. You've been very negative. You've spoken about how I raised my children. And I don't want to I don't need to talk to you. And she said, and, and he said, just how you you said if you continue saying negative things about people, something will come back to you. That's when she said, Oh, are you threatening me? And that really rubbed me the wrong way. Um and I would say I was pretty much on her side up until that point. Because let's be real, this is a radio show. This is an interview. LeVar Ball is not threatening you by saying karma is going to come your way if you continue being negative. That's that's what he said. He pretty much said karma's a bitch. That's not a threat. That is not a threat. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> and I chalked it up as, look, you jumped out there to criticize him and he snapped back. He probably killed the ant with a sledgehammer, but you lost. Take your L. That's not even that bad. And the thing about it is, LeVar Ball has been disrespectful to everyone that he has he spoken thought- to. I'm not justifying his his behavior. However, like this is this is his mo, and you keep on putting him on television, free pub- publicity. Like I don't know when these networks are going to realize if you don't like him, don't put him on. It wasn't a threat. That's ridiculous. So, and then, you know, she played the victim card. And then later on the show and later on her show, she was almost in tears because he said, stay in your lane and, you know, something will come your way. And this is where I'm going to get a little political right here and talk about society real quick. As a black man, we are always seen as a threat for almost anything. Just this past Wednesday, we had... Uh, the trial for the officer in Tulsa, Oklahoma, who shot an unarmed man last year for a traffic stop. Trash. And her defense was, I felt threatened, yet this gentleman was walking away from you unarmed with his hands in the air, and she felt threatened. We've seen it with... Trayvon, Trayvon Martin, George Zimmerman felt threatened after attacking him. Mike Brown, Eric Garner, like we can go through the line. So when she said, I felt threatened, that is what I thought of, to be honest. And I understand these things are not sports related, but let's be real. Whenever a white woman says those things about a black man, that is what the masses believe that, well, he was being threatened. He was threatening her. She felt in danger. And I'm like, you know what? This is a sports talk show. He was not getting up out of his seat to hit you. He, this isn't Jerry Springer where you could throw hands on stage. Like, you all had a disagreement. You jumped out there. And he came back hard. Take your L. Don't then spin it around as I'm being the victim. And then she tried to say... um, well, you know what? Maybe you need to work with these companies and market to women. I'm going to ask you all this question. I know I don't have much time. Which athlete markets to women? Which male athlete really markets their product to women? I'm not saying it's right. 
But there is a reason because most of the time it's men that are watching sports. Which, and I'm going to talk about specifically basketball, which basketball player markets to women? None. You can maybe say Michael Jordan, and the women's say, line is very limited. You can he, maybe say Devil's Advocate Jordan Brand. That's not him as a player, though. And yeah. they just started. They're like, have you yeah. seen? Have you seen those clothes? No, they don't need to. No, they don't need to make that. And the thing about it is, you don't start off with a women's line, and that's when she tried to say, "Oh, well, your line's not really." Uh, look, I hate the fact that his shoes are five hundred five hundred dollars. I disagree with that. He is trying to do something but he's going about it the wrong way but don't try to say well because you don't market the women your product is trash no your product is trash because it's five hundred dollars but she tried to spin it as well um you don't market the women and no one's gonna buy your stuff because you don't market the women lebron james doesn't market the women kobe ryan doesn't market the women uh kevin durant doesn't market the women let's go to adidas james harden doesn't market the women damian lillard what other what other um big uh uh, let's take it to another sport. Tom Brady doesn't market the women outside of the Uggs, but that's Uggs. Uh, Cam Newton doesn't market the women. Let's go to baseball. Bryce Harper doesn't market the women. Let's go to hockey. They don't market nope. anybody. <laughs> they <laughs> so, don't market to anybody. <laughs> so, like, for you to then say this man's product is trash because he doesn't market the women, I think your 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 logic is faulty. You can bring up the price being five hundred dollars. You could bring up the fact that it looks like Kobe eights that that he has. Lavar Ball is trying to do something for to build a brand. I like that he wants to do it, but I don't like the execution. But come on, man, come on, don't 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 do that. Don't do that, man. Don't don't when you when you disrespect when you disrespected this man. Don't then play the victim when he comes back and actually reacts to you. That's all I gotta say about that. Absurd. How much time we got? Probably none right now. Real quickly, uh, somebody won the uh, Preakness, and it wasn't American Dreaming. I think it was uh, Cloud Computing. Yeah, so uh, no Triple Crown this year. There was a boxing match at MGM uh, National Harbor. Had no idea that it was happening. And the best thing about the fight was after the fight. Uh, I can't remember the boxer's name, but this boxer, he won because uh, the other fighter punched him after the bell. So... He won by disqualification. That boxer's trainer ran up on the other boxer, punched him. They had a melee in the ring. The trainer ran off. PG County police are looking for him at the moment, I think. <laughs> so it's Super crazy lit. out here. Super oh, lit. damn. Oh, damn. <laughs> ah, or, ah. I may be exaggerating about looking at him for the looking looking for him at the moment. They were definitely looking for him Saturday night after the fight. He might have been found. I don't know. But um, definitely they said he was at large during the telecast. They said the uncle, which is the trainer, they're like, he is at large for punching the opponent <laughs> after the fight. Had no idea there was a fight here in our backyard, man. Hey, Matt, I want to thank you for everything that you do. Matt, we, this has to become a regular thing, especially when we yeah, talk about basketball. This time. Um, when we talk about the Michael Jordan, LeBron James comparisons, you have to be in the studio. So make sure you come to that. Come through. Uh, Max, I want to thank you for everything that you do. Also, we, we got a uh, a new new employee here. Train him, John. He he he's he's doing pretty well. Made things uh, go really seamless here. Uh, so I want to thank everything that thank you all for everything that you do. I want to thank our listeners and viewers. Uh, follow us, Sports Reality LV on Instagram, Twitter, also the Facebook page, Sports Reality. Until next time, everyone. Sports Reality. Peace. Peace.